Welcome to the After History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Thursday, March 17th, 2022, and we are live. Call in numbers 313-778-7600 if you have a question or comment. So today, uh, once again, this is um, another St. Patrick's Day. Today has been a very, very interesting day. If you follow me on my Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, or my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. You know, I posted about uh, St. Patrick's Day and some of the history of St. Patrick's Day uh, on my Facebook fan page and got hundreds of responses, very interesting responses. So on today's show, um, we're going to deal with uh, should African-Americans celebrate St. Patrick's Day? We're going to deal with some of the history of St. Patrick's Day also, some of the little known history of St. Patrick's Day. And I've done presentations and done episodes of my shows dealing with the history of St. Patrick's Day. So that's what we'll deal with uh, on today's show. All right. So um, on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct your own behavior, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself. And what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So um, today is a uh, March 17th, another St. Patrick's Day. And this commemorates uh, when Patrick, um, at, this commemorates the date that uh, St. Patrick actually dies in 461 AD. Uh, or common era, uh, March 17th, 461 AD. And I'm going to go to my some of my social media posts here in just a minute. But um, around this time of the year, you'll see St. Patrick's Day parade, parades, kiss, kiss me, I'm Irish t-shirts. You'll see green beer. Uh, it's expected that over 130 million Americans will spend approximately $5.8 billion on St. Patrick's Day related items. And that comes from the National Retail Federation, NRF.com, National Retail Federation. So um, I have a background in, in, in marketing and sales. So when I do um, research on the different holidays and how much the holidays are going to generate, I go to NRF.com, National Retail Federation, and the various news outlets, things like this, when they talk about how much a particular holiday is expected to generate, they're usually citing NRF.com, National Retail Federation. So based upon their um, survey, consumers are expected to spend an average of $42.33 on St. Patrick's Day in 2022. 54% of American adults are expected to uh, participate in St. Patrick's Day, plan, uh, 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 celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And St. Patrick's Day is expected to uh, generate $5.87 billion in sales, $5.87 billion in sales. Now, um, the St. Patrick's Day in 2020 was expected to generate uh, about $6 billion, that was before COVID-19 hit uh, in, in, in 2020. So St. Patrick's Day is, is, is still big business, not as big as Christmas or Valentine's, Valentine's Day, which is about $22 billion, $21, $22 billion. But there's still uh, money generated from St. Patrick's Day. So uh, you're going to see uh, these celebrations and people getting drunk and green beer, things like this. One of the strangest things that you will see is African-Americans celebrating St. Patrick's Day. And I asked the question, do you really know what you are celebrating? Do you really know what you are celebrating? Now, I'm not telling African-Americans, black people, Afri people of African descent, I'm not telling them don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day, but if you do uh, choose to participate in St. Patrick's Day, you should, I think, 
I think, you should at least know what the hell it is you're participating in. You should understand the history of what it is that you are participating in. Okay? Now, I recommend that you read African People and European Holidays and Mental Genocide by Dr. Shaka Musa Barashango, book one, with book two, book one and book two. Because in, in his books, he deals with the history of these various holidays, including St. Patrick's Day, to break down the history so you understand what you are participating in. And a lot of this stuff, we were taught to participate in it when we were children. And if you ask your parents who was St. Patrick, what did he do? They may say he's, he was a saint. They may say he was a Christian saint. He was a bishop. Oh, he drove the snakes out of Ireland. <laughs> really? <laughs> so we're going to get deep into this history here as we do every St. Patrick's Day. We're going to get deep into this history because, and, and this is some of the information I deal with in my, in my online classes, especially ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, where they didn't teach you in school. Uh, when you deal with this history, there's no evidence that snakes were ever in Ireland. Ireland is an island, and Ireland is a cold climate, okay? The, the climate of Ireland is, is a cold climate. It's not conducive to snakes there is no evidence that snakes were ever in, in Ireland in the first place. So when you go through it and, and ask African Americans this question, not trying to, not trying to trip them up, not trying to, to demean them or deride them or denigrate them or anything like this, but just have conversation. You you realize that many of them don't know why they celebrate what they celebrate, why they participate in it. Or then you have some people that say, well, you know, my great, I, I was looking at some Facebook posts and, and I'll show you some of the posts quickly. Uh, you know, my great, great grandmother was black Irish or, you know, I'm 7% black. I, I'm 7% Irish. I'm 5% Irish. I saw all that stuff today. Okay. So one of the questions that I ask is, um, it, it, first of all, you know, that's like, uh, 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 Tina Turner asking the question, what's love got to do with it? Because when you study the history, uh, St. Patrick was not Irish. He was actually British. But that's a that, that that's part of understanding the history and separating the fact from the fiction. OK, so one of the questions that I asked today and I ask it each each uh, St. Patrick's Day to get people to start thinking, because, you know, I understand, I understand the program and I understand the advertising. My degrees in business administration with a major in marketing. I understand the program and I was trained in the program and I know I know what it is I'm looking at. OK, so I already know what people are going to say when I ask the question. But, but one of the questions that I asked today is. Um, if you wear green on St. Patrick's Day, will you wear red, black and green on African Liberation Day? If you wear green on St. Patrick's Day, will you wear red, black and green on African Liberation Day? If not, why not? We got 647 likes, 114 comments. OK, and we know that African Liberation Day is on uh, uh, May 25th. OK, and African Liberation Day commemorates uh, the founding of the Organization of African Unity. OK, May 25th, 1963. All right. So African Liberation Day is celebrated all across the country by African Americans, okay, people of African descent. So if you celebrate, if you wear green on St. Patrick's Day, will you wear red, black, and green on African Liberation Day? And I asked that question for two reasons. One, to introduce African Liberation Day to, to some people because a lot of our people don't know about it, okay, number one. Number two, to get them to start thinking, why do you wear green? Green wasn't even Patrick's color. Patrick's color was blue. See, this is this is the programming. We're programming with children to do stupid stuff. And then we replicate it when we're adults and teach our children and don't even know why we do what we do. This is why this this is why th this book here is so important. And, and I this is one, of, you know, I reference this book also in my, in my classes. But this is why this book by Dr. Shaka Musa Barashango is so important. The African people and European holidays and mental genocide. That's book one. I read both of them. Book, I read book one and book two. Okay. So we can start to deprogram ourselves from the program and that operates 24-7. White supremacy is a powerful drug. 
Now, what I say may go outside the circumference of some people's awareness. Just because you never heard it before, disagree with it, or don't like it, does not mean it's not true. It just means you have to do some research to understand what I'm talking about. So you came to the right person. You came to the right place. Okay, this is the African History Network show. Follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network. Uh, follow us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Turn on live notifications so you know when we go live. We're also celebrating our 12th year anniversary of me broadcasting the African History Network show. First uh, first uh, broadcasted March 10th, 2010, 12 years ago. And um, in April, so this is our 12th year anniversary that we're celebrating. And then also in April, April 2022, it'll be six years of me broadcasting right here on 9, 10 a on the Superstation WFDF. Okay, we're going to continue this on the other side of the break and get into some of this history about St. Patrick. Okay, what would what was Saint what did St. Patrick actually do? Was Saint was Patrick actually canonized as a saint? Just because somebody is a saint, does it mean that they were good? Did snakes ever exist in Ireland? Okay, who were the druids? All right, what were the druids practicing? We're going to get into all this. You listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, stand by. We want commercial break. Back from break in four minutes. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in also. If you like this type of information, you, you can support the African History Network dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. It helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air keep broadcasting, pay some of the bills, et cetera. Uh, back from break in four minutes, okay? Stand by, everybody. How's everybody doing? So did you have any conversations today with people about celebrating uh, St. Patrick's Day? Just curious. And by back from breaking three minutes. All right, who we have here? We've got Fly Girl. Be sure to follow us on our social media platforms. Turn on live notifications so you know when we go live. Stand by. <laughs> okay. Back from breaking two minutes. We'll also talk some about the Knights Templar as well. From breaking one minute. Stand by. Uh, 
an African History Network show. We deal with current events in history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Unfortunately, many people confuse what racism is. Racism is a power structure. And with laws and policies that put us in this predicament, it's going to be laws and policies that take us out. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do it, teach what it doesn't know. We have it all on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. If you've been injured, stand by. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. All right. So right before the break, we were dealing with uh, some of the history of St. Patrick's Day and asking the question, should African-Americans celebrate St. Patrick's Day? We know that uh, on March 17th, this was uh, the anniversary of Patrick's death in uh, 461 AD, March 17th, 461 AD. Some sources may say 460 AD, common era. Okay, so uh, I wanna go back to, uh, I'm gonna go back to this information here. And we were talking about the book, um, African people and European holidays and mental genocide by Dr. Shaka Musa Barashango as well. Okay, so if we look at uh, who was St. Patrick, who was St. Patrick, all right? Uh, we're gonna go to that here in just a second, who was St. Patrick? And uh, some of the, so, so some of the conversations that uh, I had online with some people today, uh, yeah, some people who said they were, uh, you know, they had, uh, they were part Irish, African Americans, so they may have been 5% uh, Irish. Uh, they had, may have had a great grandmother who was black Irish or something like that. Um, but what's interesting is that um, Patrick wasn't even Irish, he was British. So if we look at who was St. Patrick, who was St. Patrick? Uh, History.com has a good uh, article dealing with that, uh, dealing with uh, St. Patrick. Who was St. Patrick? He wasn't Irish, but he found his faith while being held as a prisoner by a group of Irish raiders. So St. Patrick, we know, is the, is the patron saint of Ireland. And he, uh, St. Patrick is one of Christianity's most widely known figures but for all of his prevalence in culture, namely the holiday held on the day of his death that bears his name, his life remains somewhat of a mystery, okay? Now, now what most of what we know about St. Patrick comes from uh, his writings toward the end of his life called the Confessio, okay? And there's a lot of myth uh, surrounding St. Patrick also. Many of the stories traditionally associated with St. Patrick, including the famous account of his banishing all the snakes from Ireland, are false. Many of the stories traditionally associated with St. Patrick, including the famous account of his banishing all the snakes from Ireland, are false. The products of hundreds of years of exaggerated storytelling. Once again, there's no evidence that snakes were ever in Ireland. We're also going to reference uh, Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization by Tony Browder. And we're also going to talk about on today's show, we'll talk about uh, the Knights Templar as well. Okay. We'll talk about the Knights Templar because that ties into the Druids and ties into Frigatrisca Decaphobia, which is the fear of Friday the 13th. So when you dig into this history and, and one, of, and I've been studying this history for years, dealing with the different holidays and another book that I read, uh, was the everything Irish book. Where is that book? The every, the everything, um, Irish book. And that is, where the hell did I put that? I just had it. Okay. I'll find it during the commercial break. The everything, uh, Irish book. Okay, I have to find it during commercial break. Uh, but that deals with a lot of Irish history also. Okay, now, 
Let me go back to this article here. Uh, St. Patrick was born in Britain, not Ireland. He was born in Britain, not Ireland, to wealthy parents near the end of the fourth century common era AD. He is believed, so in researching this, he's born uh, around 385 AD common era, okay, in what's known as Roman Great Britain. What we know as, as England and, 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 the, um, Great Britain under the English, under the Anglo-Saxons being a world power doesn't exist at this time. The dominant European power is the Roman Empire. So you have Roman Great Britain, okay, and is believed that uh, uh, Patrick was born probably in Scotland, which is part of Roman Great Britain, but he was not Irish. He is believed to have died on March 17th, around 460 AD or 461 AD. Usually the date that you'll see is 461 AD common era. Although his father was a Christian deacon, it has been suggested that he probably took on the role because of tax incentives. And there is no evidence that Patrick came from a particularly religious family. Just a second here. All right. There's no evidence that Patrick came from a particularly religious family. OK, now here's the book I was looking for, because I've got I have to teach my classes this weekend, my two online classes. And I was preparing for that. So I have two binders for the online classes I teach. But this book here, this, when I was researching Irish history to be able to do uh, my presentations dealing with St. Patrick's Day, the Everything Irish History and Heritage book. Um, this is by Amy Hackney Blackwell and Ryan Hackney. Has a ton of information, takes you all throughout Irish history. I was trying to get a better understanding of Irish history in general and see where Patrick fits into that Irish history as opposed to just dealing with Patrick himself. So uh, at the age of 16, Patrick was taken prisoner by a group of Irish raiders who were attacking his family's estate. They transported him to uh, Ireland, transported him to Ireland, where he spent uh, six years in captivity. OK, so he was a slave in Ireland for six years. He was a British slave in Ireland for six years. Now, there is some dispute over where this captivity took place. Although many believe he was taken uh, to live in Mount Slemish in County Antrim, it is more likely that he was held in County Mayo near Kalala. All right. But he was he was captured by the the Irish and enslaved in, in, in Ireland also for six years. Now, during this time, he worked as a shepherd outdoors and away from people, lonely and afraid of. Uh, lonely and afraid, he turned to his religion for solace, becoming a devout Christian, becoming a devout Christian. It is also believed that Patrick first began to dream of converting the Irish people to Christianity during his captivity. Now, after more than six years as a prisoner, Patrick escaped. According to his writing, OK, the Confessio, according to his writing, a voice which he believed to be God's, spoke to him in a dream, telling him it was time to leave Ireland. Now, to do so, Patrick walked nearly 200 miles from County Mayo, where uh, it is believed he was held, to the Irish coast. After escaping to Britain, which is Roman Great Britain, after escaping to Britain, Patrick reported that he experienced a second revelation a second revelation, an angel in a dream tells him to return to Ireland as a mission, as a missionary. Now, soon after this, Patrick began religious training, a course of study that lasted more than 15 years. Now, after his ordination um, as a priest, he uh, Patrick was sent to Ireland with a dual mission to minister to Christians already living in Ireland and to begin to convert the Irish. Okay, so this is 432 AD, Pope Celestine I 
sends him into Ireland to convert the Irish uh, uh, to uh, Christianity. Okay. Now, interestingly, this mission contradicts the widely held notion that Patrick introduced Christianity to Ireland because there was um, there was someone who went in in 431 A.D. I think his name was Palladium for in 431 A.D. into Ireland to convert the Irish to Christianity. Now, at this point in time, at this point in time, the Catholic Church does not exist. The Catholic Church does not come into existence until uh, mid 11th century A.D., right around 1052, 1054 A.D. or Common Era. At this point in time, fourth century Common Era A.D., fifth century is the Eastern Orthodox Church. Catholic Church doesn't exist at this point in time. So when you talk about the First Council of the Nicaea in 325 A.D., that's not the Catholic Church you're dealing with. Catholic Church doesn't exist. You talk about the Council of the Chalcedon and the Council of Ephesus and all that. That's the Eastern Orthodox Church. Okay, so um, St. Patrick incorporated Irish culture into Christian lessons. Now, familiar with the Irish language and culture, Patrick chose to incorporate traditional ritual into his lessons of Christianity instead of attempting to eradicate native Irish beliefs. All right. And you're going to see this as the Roman Empire conquers various people. And, and, and I deal with this when we deal with the history of, of Christmas. OK, you're going to see what people call pagan religions, pagan traditions incorporated into what the Christians are practicing. All right. Uh, and this is I mean, this, this, this deals with why Christmas is celebrated on December 25th. There's nowhere in the biblical text. And this may go outside the circumference of some people's awareness. Nowhere in the biblical text does it state that Yeshua or Jesus the Christ was born on December 25th. The letter J didn't exist until 1630 A.D. OK, when you look at the word Jesus in the dictionary, look at the etymology of the word. It takes you back to Yeshua, which is Hebrew. Letter J didn't even exist. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. Let's to the African History Network show right here on Nats and M Superstation Future Radio on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, stand by. Okay, if you like to back from breaking four minutes. If you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. We're here six days a week. This helps us keep doing the research. Um, celebrated in Europe in 9th and 10th century. Yeah, well, he passed away in 5th century AD, 461 AD. I didn't say they weren't celebrating it then. I said the Catholic Church didn't exist until mid 10th century AD, mid, mid 11th century AD. All right, stand by. Okay, you can register for the online classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Saturdays is ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understand the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And uh, Sunday is from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement of Black Power, 1865 to 1968. Back from breaking two minutes. So we deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. Uh, I'm going to post a link here. You can also register at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, back from breaking two minutes. Okay, so this class is on sale, $60, regularly $130. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. And then we have also a bundle pack when you can register for both classes for um, $100. Regularly, it's a $260 value.
Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Thursday, March 17th, 2022, and we are live. Uh, calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment. Okay, be sure to register for the online classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, where they didn't teach them in school. This is a 10-week online class that I teach. We deal with thousands of years of history. Uh, this is at my online school. I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips. You don't have to buy any of the books to follow along in class. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. Even after the class is over with, you can go back and watch the entire class. Okay, you'll still have access to the entire class. So this class is on sale, um, $60, regularly $130. We have a bundle pack where you can register for both classes that I teach um, for a hundred dollars. That's a $260 value, uh, a bundle pack. The second class that I teach on Sunday is, uh, in both of these classes are 2 PM to 4 PM, one on Saturday, the other Sunday from the civil war to the civil rights movement of black power, 1865 to 1968 from the civil war to the civil rights movement of black power, 1865 to 1968. Okay. And, uh, you can register for the bundle and uh you can uh get you'll get both of those classes also and we have another class starting up uh, great african women in history the mothers of civilization great african women in history the mothers of civilization that's uh march 19th and 26 uh and that one is 25 dollars. okay that's at africanhistorynetwork.com all right uh, i want to go back to uh the topic here dealing with uh saint pat and saint patrick's day history so, uh, you know, I see this every year. I see these conversations and I, and, and I, I see people talk 